<sighs> Equestria games. This one's gonna be a toughie. I need pick-me-up music. But I just used E.T.'s Adventures on Earth in my collab with Toon Critic. If only there was another song written by John Williams that fit the theme of this episode perfectly. Wait a minute. If you missed my Twilight's Kingdom collab, go watch it, it's awesome, then you should know that I... liked this episode. I know, I know, unpopular opinion, but it's true. And I want to go over why. Like, the top five reasons why I liked it. But the episode wasn't perfect, and I also want to show that I sympathize with the haters, so I want to do a top five worst things about the episode, so... Like, a top five best and a top five worst? Oh, I should do a yay and nay list! Because stealing from other analysis who are better than you always helps you grow. That's how it works, right? So here we go at my own yay and nay of Equestria Games. Now, before I really start, let me additionally clarify that this is 150% my own opinion. If you disagree, guess what? It's because you're not me. Anywho, let's get going. Number 5. <laughs> Equestria Games. You know, the games themselves, not the episode. Actually, I really just put the Equestria games in the nay spot because, well, I needed a fifth nay. In all honesty, I didn't really care much one way or the other. Like many people, I expected the Equestria games to fit in somewhere with the finale. However, when I saw the name of this episode and I realized that it was not the case, all of my expectations flew out the window and I was just like, Oh boy, 22 minutes of sports. What fun. I mean, I like sports fine, but that's not why I come to MLP. That's what the Super Bowl is for. Or the World Cup. Or the Olympics, funnily enough. Actually, this episode perfectly portrayed how much of the Olympics I actually watch. I torture myself with the opening ceremony celebrating countries I've never heard of. There's usually one event I'm actually interested in, and the rest I just use as a backdrop while I do something else, before watching the closing ceremonies and then waiting another two years to lather, rinse, and repeat. So for me, there was a perfect amount of sports. But I will admit there was a lot of build-up for not much payoff, but it's not a sin of this episode. Rather, I add it to the now very long list of sins for Rainbow Falls. And on the topic of things the episode was expected to cover, number five... And there was much rejoicing. This is probably the best, or at least my favorite, Spike episode. Say what you want about season four, but it had the best Spike episodes. Granted, there wasn't a lot of competition, but that's not the point. I had just finished saying that Inspiration Manifestation was the best Spike episode when this episode had to air and make a liar out of me. Thanks for that. But really, I think this episode dealt with his character well, and while it wasn't the topic we were expecting the episode to tackle, I'm happy that Spike gets one more episode that at least I can call good, even if I'm one of the few ones that does so. Speaking of not doing anything, number four... <laughs> Princesses of standing there and doing nothing, and no, I'm not talking about Twilight. No! No, go ahead, pools open, water's fine. Hmm? No? Just going to stand there like a bunch of pissants? Thought so. Seriously, we've hardly ever seen the princesses actually do anything without failing hard, and when a real danger arrives, nothing. I mean, I know we saw the very convenient anti-unicorn device earlier, which I'm pretty sure Pasta loved, and was probably installed after Twilight cheated, so it might stand to reason that they don't use their magic, but literally every one of the other flying subjects goes in to help, and the princesses that have wings and the strength of an earth pony can only be bothered to look up and gasp, DO SOMETHING! <clears throat> Moving on. Number four. There were a lot of cute and funny moments in this episode, and it was really hard picking between them, so this is a bit of a placeholder for all of them. But we do need a flag carrier, so who better than the wall-eyed wonder herself, Derpy. I just love the bit where everyone comes out and says their catchphrases, and then for Derpy, silence. But yes, lots of cute and funny moments in this episode for me to appreciate. But there was something missing from the original entrance of the Ponyville team. Number three. <laughs> where the is the rest of the Ponyville team. I mean, seriously, it was bad enough when they ignored the fact that there were over 100 Pegasi in Ponyville and theoretically they could only compete in one event and theoretically there were 38 medals won by the Ponyville team, but who won them? I'm seeing one, two, three, four, eight ponies in the train car with Rainbow talking in the beginning and no one else. That's not even to mention that the games are clearly Pegasi heavy, which I suppose makes a little sense since the Pegasi culture does have a bit of a Hellenistic vibe to it and the games probably originated in Pegasi culture like the Olympics originated in Greece. 
But that's not the point. There still should have been more ponies in the Ponyville team. I understand that maybe not all of them were in the car, but for humans, everyone, and I mean everyone, should be walking in with their country in order to be considered an Olympian. You lied to me. Speaking of lying, wow, that transition wasn't forced at all. Number three. Avoiding the landmine plot. When this scene with Twilight and Spike after the opening ceremony started to unravel, all I could think was, oh no, 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 not a liar revealed story. I've seen that a hundred times, and I don't think even MLP can rehash that story to- Oh! Oh, they're not doing that. Oh, thanks, Celestia. So props for not using the overdone plotline. Speaking of overdone, number two- <laughs> Oh, we're the Wonderbolts, and we're super fast, and we're from Cloudsdale, which is a part of Equestria <laughs> that we like best, and we're proud, and we're fast, and we like it because it really has nice trees. Yeah, we love the town because it's so cool, and, and we like to fly really fast, and everything like that. Uh, I kind of wish this was over, because it isn't yet. You and me both, Spike. Quickly moving on, unlike the episode did, number two, <laughs> world building. There was so much here, like the anthem to Cloudsdale, no, not mentioning that again. But really, there were things like the flags of the different nations, finding out that griffins came in skittle colors too, and this shot, just this shot. So much can be taken from this. I mean, just in the royal box, we've got the super royals of the four alicorn princesses of Equestria, which you will notice are all the same level and equal sized thrones. The level for the foreign and lesser royalties, where we see the return of Prince Blueblood and the Saddle Arabian horses, as well as the first appearance of the Egyptian ponies, who are later named the Duke and Duchess of Mertonia. And then we have the last level, which confuses me a bit, actually. For starters, we have the two ponies that came to visit as well in the finale, which I thought looked a lot like Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, but what do I know? But then we have Fancy Pants and that Fleur de Lis pony, whatever her name is, which indicates it's a level for nobility and upper class. It also lets us know that Fancy Pants is very well off since he's the only Canterlot elite to get this seat. Even Rarity, who saved the world countless times, can't score that seat. And then we have Cherry Jubilee, who must have had more power in Dodge Junction than we initially gave her credit for, as well as Mayor Mayor. But the thing is... Even if we assume that Cherry Jubilee is the mayor of Dodge Junction, then where are the other mayors? Surely there are more towns in Equestria. What about the Sheriff of Appaloosa and whatnot? <clears throat> in any event, I'm probably taking this too seriously, but there is a lot to look at in this episode. And finally, the number one... <laughs> now, I'm a fan of a good reference. I mean, I make them all the time. Sis Boom Ba. Sis Boom Ba. <laughs> Describe the sound made when a sheep explodes. The staff are good at making obvious but fitting references in the show that I appreciate, and I'm the type to laugh at a bad pun and whatnot. But this... Equestria, we have a problem. It's at times like this I wish I had a face hoof OC. Oh well, to assist me, I've instilled the help of the captain of face palms, Jean-Luc Picard. This was bad. And yes, I'm sure that no one really noticed and those who did didn't care, but remember that I said this is a personal yay and nay. I'm a big fan of Apollo 13. It was a holy grail of movies in my house when I was a kid, mainly because my grandfather had been called out of retirement to help with the mission when things went south. I want you guys to find every engineer who designed every switch, every circuit, every transistor, and every light bulb that's up there. Then I want you to talk to the guy in the assembly line who actually built the thing. But here's the thing. In the scene in question, Tom, or... Jim was calling down to the Space Center in Houston, Texas when shit got real and their lives were in real jeopardy. Not only are the stakes not nearly as high, but- Equestria, we have a problem. Who are you talking to? This just makes no sense. And now for the reason I loved it. The reason I'm willing to have muffins thrown at me for my opinion. Just kidding, Nick. The number one- My guess. You guess? I just saw what needed to be done and reacted. Just so happens I can breathe fire, and if any of you could do that, you'd have done the same. Forgive me for being blunt, Spack, but you're not making a lick of sense. Hmm. It's just how I feel. Wait a second. I think I get it. You keep saying you let every pony down, but we all keep saying you didn't. You know who was disappointed in you, Spike? You. And only you can make it right with you again. What would that take, Spike? Hmm. I don't know. Can you turn back time? Cause I'd sure like a do-over on that opening ceremony. 
We, mm, I guess I have to at least give it a shot. You know, it's kind of weird. No matter how many times others tell you you're great, all the praise in the world means nothing if you don't feel it inside. Sometimes to feel good about yourself, you've got to let go of the past. That way, when the time comes to let your greatness fly, you'll be able to light up the whole sky. I'm not crying! Not! The best way to understand what this mall meant to me is for me to tell you a story. I had pulled an all-nighter the night before the episode because I'd had a bit of a meltdown. If you were to combine the conversation Rainbow Dash and Twilight have in Testing Testing 1 to 3 and the conversation here, you'd get the gist of the conversation my father and I had at about 1 o'clock in the morning, with the part of my father being played by Twilight and Applejack and Rainbow Dash and Spike going through my own insecurities. You were just trying to help. It's just too bad I'm too dumb to learn anything. You are not dumb. You just learn differently. If by differently you mean not at all, then you're totally right. No, that's totally wrong. See? Wrong again! I don't know any pony that's read more Daring Do books than you. Well, that's not gonna get me into the Wonder Bolts. And your knowledge of jokes and pranks is only rivaled by Pinky. Great! My years of being a class clown prevented me from actually learning how to learn! This lasted a while before I had to go to work at 5am and return to watch ponies. Needless to say, it hit me in an already sensitive area, and this episode is still the only episode of My Little Pony to bring tears to my eyes. Granted, I was exceedingly tired, thus a little more raw, but still, the reason I loved it, as I tried to warn you guys before, is very personal. And just as I'm not able to convert the haters, you can't tell me this episode is bad, because it came to me just when I needed it the most. Just like I'm sure My Little Pony has come to the rescue in many of your own lives. I'm Sweetie Blue, and always remember to light up the sky. If what you want does not want you, and you've got no 